I have a few questions. How many of us have ever purposefully messed up while we were doing something so that we never had to do it again? Maybe you missed a spot while you were sweeping or accidentally forgot to unload the dishwasher. Next question. Who has ever competed in a CDE or LDE? Most of us probably have. And finally, have you ever purposely messed up while competing in that CDE or LDE so that you never had to do it again? No, no one, right? Well, I once completely messed up my extemporaneous speaking event because I didn't think I could do it. I know it sounds bad, but I was not confident in my ability. I was not prepared and I had barely practiced ahead of time. The entire time leading up to the second I walked into that room, I was coming up with reasons why I was going to do bad. I was making excuses the whole time I was competing. Competing that day was like trying to climb a tall mountain only to never reach the peak. Every time I felt that I would get close, I let something get in my way and force me back down the hill. We all make excuses. Excuses for our actions, excuses for our behaviors, excuses for everything. These excuses have the power to stop us in our tracks from doing something we absolutely could have. I told myself that I couldn't be successful and extempt. Realistically, I could have done it and climbed to the top of that mountain, but I told myself I couldn't. These excuses have the powers to control the actions that we do or do not take. A few months ago, I set a daunting task for myself. I was going to climb every fire tower in New York. Guess how many I've done so far? One. I know it sounds bad, but I believe that we have the ability to climb the mountain ahead of us. The mountain of excuses. All mountain climbers begin at a base camp and start their journey from there. Our base camp takes place during the first state officer training of the year at Camp Asugachi, which ironically was called base camp. After packing enough things to last me a year in the Asugachi wilderness, I was ready to go. As I picked up the new District 2 President Kyle and we hit the road, all we could talk about was how excited we were to get back to the land of the dark waters and see our new teams again. As we finished up the first day of training, we were told that we had a very special surprise in store. We were all going to jump off the big rock that overlooks Rock Pond. This was a once in a lifetime experience that most of us had never gotten to do before. We were ecstatic, except for two people. Kyle and Sitlali don't know how to swim. Nevertheless, we all grabbed our towels and some life preservers before heading out to the rock. Walking to the edge and looking down, I begin feeling a bit nervous. It's really high up and the water's only about 40 degrees. Oh gosh, what have we gotten ourselves into? Finally, I built up enough courage. I ran to the edge and I leaped off into the water before I swam back up to cheer on my teammates as they flew into the pond. Flash forward a few jumps and I realized that there were two people still standing on the dry land. Kyle and Sitlali had yet to dip their toes in the water. Treading in the water beneath them, we shouted up encouraging words knowing that they could do it. Finally, as the minutes ticked by, Sitlali built up enough courage, she ran to the edge of the rock and leaped off into the air before hitting the water. The smile on her face when she came up was one that I will never forget. Next came the task of cheering Kyle on into the pond. We began chanting, Kyle, 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 and then it happened. He ran to the edge, leaped off into the air, and splashed down into the water. I'll be honest with you, Kyle didn't take to water like a fish in the sea. He came up flailing and looking for anything to support him. One of the first things that lifeguards are taught is to not let whoever they are saving grab them and pull them into the water. I'm not a lifeguard. So in about two seconds, Kyle had ganked me under with him and then we were both struggling 
to get to the surface, where we then relied on Brandon to get us to shore. Although I emerged in the water exhausted and a bit scratched up, I couldn't get the smile off my face. My friends had accomplished something so daunting and didn't let their fear hold them back. When Kyle came up, there were two things that he said. I'm so sorry I almost drowned you, and I can't believe I just did that. The entire trip home, that jump was all Kyle could talk about. What may have seemed like a little thing to the rest of us was a big deal for him, and I was so proud that he had overcome his fears and accomplished something so daunting. When we rule out excuses like fears, we are able to see so many opportunities that we have been missing out on. We are all relying on these excuses to be the reason we don't push ourselves to do something we never thought imaginable. Kyle jumped off the big rocket camp and discovered that when he didn't let his fears hold him back, he could do something he never thought imaginable. What is something that you didn't do? Did you hold back from competing or not do an activity at camp? Whatever it was, do you regret it? If so, don't feel bad. Sometimes we have to fail to realize our desire to succeed, flail before we can swim, and start the climb up our mountain with one foot in front of another. I have a challenge for everyone. I would like you to go through your day and create a list of excuses that you make. It can be anything at all. Not showering because you didn't want to get out of bed, eating fast food instead of making dinner, or even watching one more episode of your favorite show rather than doing your homework. As you count, you'll find that your list keeps getting longer and longer. How many excuses did you make today? These excuses have such a large impact, not only on what our day looks like, but also on our entire life. Imagine all that we will be able to accomplish when we rule out excuses and start doing the things we hope to do. I am not a very avid climber, as seen by my ability to only hike one fire tower so far. There are over 60 fire towers in New York, and that number scares me a bit. But I have to remember that every journey of a thousand miles starts with just one step. That one step up the mountain set me on the path to overcome the obstacles that were in my way. Not just the obstacles like the hills and valleys that were ahead of me, but the excuses I placed in my mind. The best view is from the top of the mountain, but that is only made more beautiful by the encounters I find along the way. In my family, we have a saying, carries don't run. We are not the most athletic group. Sure, we can pick hay bales out of a field all day long, but the second it comes to exercise, exercise, it's all over. Although we may hate running, we love to play soccer. My dad and sister could play for hours if they could and always looked forward to the youth soccer games. Surprisingly, I wasn't very good at those. I was more interested in chasing butterflies around the field than a ball and don't even get me started on the uniforms. But in eighth grade, I decided that I was going to join my school soccer team so that I could still stay with my friends. And man, was it rough. Remember that saying, carries don't run? This carry certainly does not. But here I was, up and down the field, doing push-ups, sit-ups, burpees, basically everything I'm bad at. Day after day, I was constantly working to get better. Except I wasn't getting better. At the end of the season, the coach said how proud he was that each girl had made a goal but not everyone had made a goal. How was I supposed to stand there and tell everyone that I hadn't actually made the ball go into the net? I couldn't. Instead, I sat there and clapped while inside, I felt like crying. Like any team, our goal was to win games. My goal was to stay as far away from the ball as possible so I wasn't responsible for making the team mess up. All that I could think about was what if I let them down this game? There were plenty of games where we were so close to winning, only to lose by a couple of points. Maybe if I had been 
braver about going up against the defense. Maybe if I had run faster, maybe if I had been one step closer to the goal. Maybe. Maybe I could have scored a goal and been the deciding factor of if my team won or not. I was terrified that I was going to let my team down, so I never took any risks while playing. I was letting down my teammates by letting my doubts and fears get the best of me until I no longer felt like I was beneficial to the team at all. You will miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Those doubts and fears crowded my mind until I no longer felt I was useful to the team at all. Our own abilities are overclouded, often like the view we may find at the peak of the mountain when we let doubts and excuses enter our minds. I didn't think that I could shoot a goal because I let myself believe that if I were to try to, I would just fail. I let that doubt be my excuse to not try my hardest. But with that doubt, I learned that if I had believed in myself, I could have accomplished everything that I set out to do. These doubts are obstacles that we are able to overcome because we are capable of doing so much more than we ever could have thought. I let that doubt act as an obstacle, like a river across the path that we have to cross. Although I may get wet in the process, I know that I can make it across this obstacle. Crossing that river, just like getting over our doubts, is possible if we believe that we can. We are often told that we have the ability to be great leaders, thinkers, and pioneers in our field. The only question is, do you believe in yourself enough to be that great leader? What is stopping you? Earlier, I challenged you to go through your day and create a list of excuses that you make. This list does not define us and the actions we take, but only shows us all that we can achieve when we set out to accomplish them. I constantly keep this challenge in my mind every day. Will you rise to the challenge? The disbelief and doubt in my abilities has limited the actions I took. As I look forward to all the opportunities that are ahead of me, I am excited to see what's in store for me to achieve. Often when we are hiking, we fail to notice all of the progress we have made. We give ourselves excuse after excuse about why we can't do it or that it's too hard without realizing that we are doing it. Looking back on this journey and every step I took, I'm realizing that I am overcoming this daunting task I set out to accomplish. I am almost at the peak of my mountain. I have traveled a long way and am confident that overcoming every obstacle in my path has only led to this moment here. High on a mountain, I am looking at an unknown top. Will I turn around and retreat back into what I know and am comfortable with, refusing to take action? Or will I run full speed into what can only promise to be an incredible unknown? We each have reasons for refusing to take action for refusing to make it to the peak of our mountain of excuses. We are able to overcome this mountain if we don't give up and take every step at a time up to the top. Our time to act against excuses starts now. It may be difficult, but we are able to achieve a life without excuses. We are at the summit of our mountain and the view from the top is breathtaking. New York FFA, climb your mountains and bask in the view from the top.